Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're doing this voxelize and dissolve effect. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this video and let's jump right into it. So we can start just by creating a box and you can use any 3D model you would like for this, but I'll just make a box to make it accessible to everyone. Give it 25 by 25 by 25 segments. Also, I'm working under customized unit setup with one unit is 10 centimeters this time because I was working on another project before. So now let's just make a tie flow. Now I am using tie flow pro, but everything that we're doing will work in the free version of tie flow as well. So nothing to worry about. You can follow along. So first we need to turn this cube into a tie flow particle. So we need a birth objects operator and just pick the cube and you can hide selection so all you see is type flow by the way you can also check hide after adding so that it will always hide that object automatically for you then we need a face fracture operator and i want to fracture it into polygons with zero variation for just one face and now we need something to activate this sort of a spread of the infection so i'll just make a sphere here and you can move it somewhere close to the box. So this will be your origin point from which everything will dissolve. And we need a surface test and a property test. So for the surface test, just pick this sphere and set the distance to, let's say, 50 centimeters. So if the squares are within 50 centimeters to the sphere, the test is true and they will be sent into another event. So I'll just make a new event here. And in order for our neighbor's test to work, we need to assign a group here. So I'll just hit tab on my keyboard and do groups and add a particle groups operator and just set the simulation group to one. And for the property test, you wanna select test type as neighbors. Test true if it's greater and then set the value to zero within a radius of maybe 30 centimeters. An important part, here under particle group, just select simulation group one. But we also want to be able to control how fast this spreads. So I'll just add a time test in here, set it to maybe five frames with one frame variation. And the test is true if it's greater than these values. And I'll just plug the property test into here and then the time test into here. So now what's happening is it's spreading around, um, but it gets stuck on the edge. So we just need to go back under property test and increase the radius to maybe 50 centimeters. So now it'll just continue spreading until it covers the entire sphere. And if you wanted it to spread faster, you can just go under the time test and set the value to maybe just one frame, right? So now it'll just sort of spread much faster than before. So you have some control over that. And you can also increase the variation to maybe five and now you'll get sort of a more random activation going on in here as well. So I actually already have a virus growth um, tutorial on my channel where the beginning of this is exactly the same. So you can check that out if you would like. So maybe I'll just set the variation to three. So basically now that the particles are activated, you can do anything you want to them. So you can turn them into little cubes. You can assign different material to them you know, apply forces. So we're just gonna play with this a little bit to get something cool going on. So I'll just hit tap and type spin, um, double click, and you can see what that does, right? So as soon as they're activated, they just start spinning randomly. You can also add a rotation operator, maybe just set the interpolation value to like 0.01 so that they start in place and then they begin to rotate randomly over time. And you can also set the timing to continuous so they continuously keep rotating randomly. But in our case, we actually want to turn them into cubes. This is the reference that I used for this tutorial. It's this launch video for MSI products um, came out last year. You get something like this. So actually what they're doing is they're turning the polygons into little cubes. So I'm gonna try and imitate that here. So we can just add a shape operator, make it 3D and just make it a cube, right? So now we just have a whole bunch of cubes um, showing up. I want to make them larger first, so I'll just add a scale operator and maybe just set that to 200%. And I wanna scale them down over time. So I'll actually add another scale operator, but this time I'll set the value to absolute 
make it zero, but go under interpolation and set this to 0 0.08. Um, that's the value that I used before. And also you need to go under timing and set this to continuous, right? So what's happening is these cubes are very slowly disappearing into nothing. Their scale becomes zero over time. Maybe this is too slow, so I'll do 0 0.03 and I'll just extend my timeline to maybe 400 frames. Right, so this is what we have right now. Over time, all of them disappear into nothing. But to make this even more interesting, I wanna make the cubes fly away. So let's just add a speed operator. You can put it right under scale here. I wanna set the direction to object center out. And then you can just unhide by name and unhide your box. And I'll just pick the box as the object. So now basically the cubes all are being forced away from the center of this cube, which is giving us something like this. Let me hide it again. Right, so that's cool, but it's a bit too uniform. So what we can do is just add a force operator and set the strength of the noise layer one to two and of the noise layer two to two as well. And now we're getting something like this. You can hit F4 to hide edged faces so you can see what you're getting. All right, so let's do the material setup. Um, before we forget, let's make sure that you add a mesh operator to all of these. So let's go into the material editor or you can just hit M and let's make a new multi sub object material discard old set the number to um, five select the first one and make it a standard v-ray material then click on this map slot next to diffuse make it a gradient ramp so i'll just switch back to the one i made before right so here are my um five materials the first one is the gradient ramp and i just added these colors here so you can just replicate that, right? You can just click to make a new point and just um, change the color however you would like to get something like this. Now the way we're gonna set up, Tyflow will actually read these colors from right to left. So when the cubes are born and they're the biggest, they will be this blue. And then when they're the smallest and they die, they will be this red. And in between, there'll be these colors here, right? So that's what we're getting here. If you pay attention to what's happening, they start off blue, then they turn sort of pinkish, and then they die uh, being that red color. Now I also want these cubes to be sort of transparent glass. So you can make reflection pure white, make refraction pure white, and then just copy this map gradient and paste it into the fog color here and set the depth to something like 50 centimeters. So this will give you glass that is tinted with the gradient color that you created here, resulting in this kind of an effect. And what you can also do to make them glow a little bit is to also paste the map into the self-illumination slot and set the multiplier to two. So again, this will just give them a bit of self-illumination so they will glow. And for the other four materials, you need one base material, which is the black, shiny one for the hand. So that's my material number five. It's just a black reflective V-ray material. And then as the polygons are being activated, they're either purple, pink, or blue, right? Just to get some nice variation going on. So material number two, I just have this blue material. You can pause the video, look at my settings. Then I just copied it two times and I just changed the color to purple and pink. And the last one is just that regular sort of a matte black. So you can name it master and just apply this master multi sub object material straight to Tyflow. Now it's not gonna work right away because we need to assign those material IDs. So you can just grab a material ID operator and put it right under birth objects here and set that to ID five, right? Because five is our black. Uh, material. Then for the particles being activated, remember we said there should be one of the three colors. So we need a random color between three different materials. So I'll just add another material ID operator, but this time I set it to random instead of static. And I want it between material number two and four, because again, two, three, four are our three solid colors. So it's kind of starting to work. We have that black cube 
and it's turning into these colorful particles. Now for this event, we also need a material ID and this is gonna be our material ID one, that's the gradient. Now the gradient is not gonna work until we do custom properties because we need to map this by scale. So again, the smaller they are, the more pink they are, the bigger they are, the more blue they are. So we need a custom properties operator, right? So let's just set the custom properties timing to continuous. And for the custom float, I wanna say scale magnitude, and I'll just name it my scale float. And then we just need a mapping operator, put it down here. Again, set the timing to continuous. And we want to say mapping from custom float. And here I'll just select my scale float. We need to enable normalize values. And because I've done this before, I know that something between minimum zero and maximum three um, gave me nice results, right? So this basically determines at which size is the particle, which color based on this gradient here. Now, the only way to check if it's really working or not is to render it out or just enable the V-Ray IPR to see what this looks like. So I'll just unhide my studio with a bunch of lights. You can just right click and say V-Ray VFB, which will open the frame buffer and just click and enable the interactive rendering. And everything is working really well. I can confirm that when the cubes are the biggest, they're blue then they turn into the purple and pinkish colors. And then when they're the smallest, they turn red. And you can also enable lens effects in your V-Ray frame buffer. So this is without, this is with, it really helps sell that um, glowing effect. And you can play with the, the size of the bloom and glare and the intensity as well. So this is it, this is the setup. The only thing I did after I figured this out was just add a nicer model, which happened to be this hand. But again, you can use a human face. You can use anything you would like to make this interesting. Of course, I boosted the contrast in After Effects and I played with the lighting. So I have some nice backlight here, just sort of highlighting the edge of the object. So as always, I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. I'll be uploading more tutorials over the coming week, so stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.